uh, good start to the week. Guys came, came back with a lot of energy and a lot of focus, and that's good to see. So um, we're preparing for Cal and excited about the opportunity. So that's about it. Have you, answer. have you heard from Pat 12 regarding Eddie? Or? Sure have, yeah. And uh, talked to the conference yesterday, and uh, all this will be handled in house. What a. Do you, do you start now and just kind of restart? Does this kind no, of feel like a restart? restart? You just keep or? going, man. You just keep getting better. You know, I mean, you just come out every day and you just try to get better and you learn from the things that you did well and you learn from the things that you need to improve on and you just apply them and come out with a great attitude and great energy and great focus and you try to help these guys get over some of the humps that, you know, that you face in any season and you keep going. Do you, do you make any sort of wholesale changes in terms of just trying to... No, when you believe in what you're doing, you don't make wholesale changes. Um, I believe in what this program has become. I think that anyone that looks at, looks at what this program has, where it was, and what it's become objectively, mm -hmm. would say, why would you make wholesale changes? Now, it doesn't matter whether you're winning or you're losing, you're always tweaking things. Mm -hmm. But if you panic, you perish. We're not about to panic. There's no reason to panic. We've won a whole lot of games the last three years, probably as many as they've ever won over the course of three years at UCLA. So we're doing something right. Um, we're in this for the long run, not the short term. And I think when you start to make wholesale changes, it, it uh, means you're panicking. Mm -hmm. And I think that you got real problems with the mm -hmm. What do you need to tweak for Cal? Oh, we tweak everything every week. We tweak, tweak coverages, we tweak blocking schemes, we tweak run games, we tweak run fits, we tweak schemes, everything. You know? so, and there's, we could, that's why we meet so long, <laughs> to tweak things, to get, to get things in order. What did you say on the film of Derek Uh Well, you know, they use him and they work the other kid in a little bit. Um, they score some points, they put up good the numbers, throwing the ball. Um, he, he's a good player. Like, what's good for the champion? Like, 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 that nice to Um, you just have to be exact in your cover, you know? Uh, Mix it up a little, mix it up on him a little bit, make him guess a little bit. And, and, and it Did you see using more nickel against that offense? Well, we're we're primarily a nickel team in this offense. I mean, we're we are you know with the teams that we have played, and the teams we play. Um, I don't know the exact percentage, but I would say that we're well over 50% nickel in our defenses already, so that's what you do. You still can mix it up a little bit. And might that go even higher against a team like that? It depends, yeah. I mean, I think what is important is you mix it. You know, you can, we, can, we have the athletes at linebacker where you can go yeah. against a four wide look and play some of your, your base stuff, and, but primarily when teams give you multiple receivers, you, you know, teams work in the net one. In this conference, you get a lot of multiple receivers, so we play, we play a good bit of the nickel stuff. Nickel and dime. Connor, show you guys enough that you'll want to work, keep working him in? You know, we've been trying to do that, as you guys see, you know, in certain situations, because he's becoming, uh, I think, more confident in his shoulder and more comfortable, and our medical personnel feel more comfortable with him getting the least amount of work. So we're creating some packages for him and moving him around a little bit and just trying to get him work. You know, but I think that, I don't think we're out of the woods yet with him. Uh, I think it would be hard for him probably to, to, to you know, play a whole game right now. But we want to just keep increasing the workload because he's a good player. So how do you pick your spots with him? What do you mean? Okay. Well, we create packages, just like we've done the last three weeks. Get him a number of reps every week. Is it a matter of limiting his time because of his shoulder? Is that it or well, is it situational? Well, limiting it, limiting, it, limiting it, but increasing it as you go. You know, increasing the workload as he becomes stronger and more comfortable. And so that's you know, you saw last week we used him at tight end a little bit, and then we left him in at tackle a little bit, and we moved him back to tight end. And so, just increasing his workload as we go. How can you tell with his shoulder that he is he just not? You said he's not necessarily fully confident in it. No, 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 no. I didn't. I said he's right. increasing in confidence. Okay. I don't think that I ever said he wasn't fully confident. I don't think those words ever came out of my mouth. As a matter of fact, you can rewind the tape and see that they never came out of my mouth. So please don't put words in my mouth. Uh, I said he's increasing in confidence every day. My apologies. Yeah. How can you tell that he's getting more confident? I guess because I watch him every day. I spend 20 hours a week with him, minimum. I talk to him every day. Ask him how he's feeling. I communicate with the doctors every day, and they tell me their communications with him. I watch him punch the bag, and I see that he looks more comfortable doing it. 
I watch him move his arm out in space, and I see that it moves more freely. And he's more willing to extend. So um, when you spend as much time with these guys as we do, there's there's no one particular thing that tells you, oh, he's he's ready to go. There's just a number of things that lead you to that conclusion. What does he bring in the offensive line? Size, intelligence, athleticism. You know, he's a very nimble guy for whatever he is, 6'7 or 6'8, can bend. He's got great flexibility in his ankles and his knees. But, uh, you know, I mean, we're, we're going to keep working with him. I know you talked about uh, on Saturday how important it is to you know make those field goals when you're in situations like that. What do you tell Kaimi? I know he's struggled for a while with you know, hitting those longer distance field goals. Is that something where you have to kind of balance his confidence with your need to also score points in that? It's hard. And yeah. make those decisions? It's hard. You know, that's a that's a position kind of like corner and tackle that the psyche of that player is so important because it's a singular moment in time and they're so isolated. You know, corners are isolated, tackles are isolated, kickers are isolated. And uh, it's like with everybody, you know, you just encourage them to, to improve and, and perform at their best when their best is needed. And, Help him along, you know, give him guidance. I mean, that's that's what we try to do with all these young people. You know, these are still young, developing players. This isn't the NFL. They're not pros yet. You know, they, they're still growing and developing. And so we just got to keep moving them along. Between the NFL and college football, I know college kickers kind of get a rap where they they're just naturally inconsistent, and obviously it's a big difference when you go to the NFL. Can you have you noticed how stark of a difference that oh, is? The, there's no difference. I mean, there's no comparison. To that. No comparison. A 50-yarder in the NFL is a chip shot. Those guys make them. And if they don't, they're not in the NFL. And there's there's a reason that there's attrition. There's a reason there's only 32 NFL kickers because they're the 32 best in the world. Uh, college kickers struggle, and most of them don't go on to the league. That's the way it is. I mean, you look around the country, there are very few kickers that will ever go on and play in the NFL. Those guys get in the NFL and they stay forever. Like I said, 50 yards in the NFL. You don't make a 50. You can't make a 50 yards in the NFL consistently. You're not going to be in the NFL. That's why there's only 32. Happened with my Detroit Lions. Twice already. Right, that's your team. I, said, I don't. I haven't paid attention. He said to NFL. <laughs> oh, ouch. To the core. Okay. Thanks, yeah, everyone.